Today, we are talking all things tools, right here in Savin's World. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's World, the gaming channel for all things Seven Days to Die. Now, if you are ready to learn all things Seven Days to Die and take your Seven Days gameplay to the next level, be sure to subscribe to Savin's World and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Today, we are talking all things tools. We are going to discuss a couple of the brand new tools that Seven Days to Die has introduced in Alpha 19. Of course, I am talking about the Ratchet and the Impact Driver. We are going to go through these brand new tools and see exactly what they are all about. So let's head inside and let's get to it. Let's start off by discussing the skills that govern these brand new tools. And of course, I am talking about salvage operations, and this is located in the perception attribute. Salvage operations says, waste not, want not. Salvage items for more resources with a wrench, ratchet, or impact driver. Now, as you increase levels in salvage operation, you're going to be dealing much more block damage, harvesting faster, and gaining more resources. Once you get this bad boy all the way up to level 5, you are going to be dealing 50% more damage, harvesting 100% faster, and gaining 100% more resources. So that's double the resources. Now, it may be a little confusing when it says deal 50% more damage. And that's because Seven Days to Die is a little bit different than other games out there. Seven Days is a voxelized game. That means the entire world is made up of blocks. Every block has a health bar or the amount of hit points that it has before it will be destroyed. So when it says deal 50% more damage, you're actually going to be dealing more block damage. So as you're wrenching down a car or using a ratchet on a car, you'll notice that the car actually has hit points. And as you wrench or ratchet or use the impact driver, those hit points will degrade. So dealing 50% more damage means that their hit points will degrade faster, meaning you can harvest faster. Add on top of that the ability to actually perform the action faster with salvage operations, and you have a very excellent, excellent perk to use if you are going to be out there salvaging and grabbing resources. As for unlocking salvage operations, level one can be unlocked right away. Level two can be unlocked when your perception is level two. Level three can be unlocked when your perception is level three. Level four can be unlocked when perception is level five. And level five can be unlocked when your perception is level seven. So that's not bad. You don't have to get your perception all the way up to level 10 in order to complete the salvage operations perk. You can get to Master Scavenger and only have to be level 7 in Perception. The next perk we want to take a look at is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. This will reduce the stamina cost for using your tools. Because yes, the wrench, the ratchet, and the impact driver all use stamina in order to perform their actions. So you want to decrease that stamina cost as much as you can. With Sexual Tyrannosaurus, you can do just that. Get this bad boy up to level 4, and you'll be reducing that tool stamina usage by 25%. Not too bad, but in order to max out Sexual Tyrannosaurus, you will need to have your strength up to level 7. So similar to Salvage Operations, you need Perception at level 7. For Sexual Tyrannosaurus, you need your strength to level 7. In order to craft the ratchet, you will need to find the ratchet schematic. There is no other way to unlock crafting the ratchet. But once you find the, ra the ratchet schematic, you are going to need forged iron, mechanical parts, duct tape, and springs. Keep in mind that as you increase the salvage operations perk, you will also increase the tier that will be available to craft. As you increase the tier that is available to craft, you will also increase the amount of items needed to craft the tool. So you'll need the same items, you will just need more of them. So keep that in mind. 
But once you have found the schematic, gathered yourself some forged iron, mechanical parts, duct tape, and springs, you will be able to craft the ratchet. The impact driver will also need a schematic before you can craft it. There is no other way to unlock crafting for the impact driver except for the impact driver schematic. So be on the lookout for this bad boy. But once you have found that schematic, you are going to need motor tool parts, forged steel, mechanical parts, duct tape, and springs. And of course, the same concept applies as you increase your salvage operation, you increase the tier of impact driver you can craft, which means you increase the amount of materials that you are going to need. Now, let's take a look at the modifications that can be made to these tools. And yes, these tools can be modified. Adding modifications to the tool will make it far more efficient at gathering those resources. So let's go ahead and go through the modifications that are available for these tools. The first three that we want to take a look at are the grip mods. You have the Fortify grip, the Structural Brace mod, and the Ergonomic grip. Next up, we have the tool modifiers. So we have the Grave Digger, Wood Splitter, Iron Breaker, Bunker Buster. We also have the Weighted Head mod. We have the Diamond Blade Tip mod. This is a very, very useful mod that makes it last a whole lot longer. And then we have the Rad Remover and the Hunter mod. Why you would throw a Rad Remover or Hunter mod on your tool is besides me. I have no idea, but they are available if you want to do it. I guess if you uh, have nothing else and you want to get that extra block damage boost, go for it. Otherwise, I really don't see a point of adding either one of those to your tools. Typically speaking, I usually go with the ergonomic grip, the bunker buster, the iron breaker, and if I have it available, if I can craft it, I do the diamond blade tip mod. Otherwise, I'll do either the wood splitter or the grave digger or one of these here if I don't have uh, anything else available to throw in it. Because you do want to maximize the modifications. Uh, put You, you want to use up every single slot if you can, because the more you modify, the more damage it'll do, the faster you can harvest the resources. Now, let's take a look at the base stats for these three tools. The wrench is the tier one tool. It is the lowest tier, then it goes the ratchet, and then it goes the impact driver. Now you will notice that the melee and power attack damage for these bad boys, they're almost identical. That's because you're not gonna be using your wrench or your ratchet or your impact driver to slay the zombie jerks. You're gonna be using these to break down items to get resources. So what you really wanna pay attention to is the block damage. So the higher the block damage, the faster you can get through whatever you are breaking down. So we see that the block damage for the wrench is 57 and a stamina cost of 18. We move up to the impact driver and we see the block damage is 72. So from 57 to 72. And the difference between the ratchet and the impact driver, the impact driver does a whopping 87 block damage and that is before modifications that is just the tool on its own and you can also see the max durability goes way up the durability on the wrench is 640 on the impact driver it's 1100 the attacks per minute are the same little bit more stamina cost on the impact driver but you really need to focus on the block damage look at the difference between the wrench and the impact driver on block damage Block damage, you're doing an extra 30 block damage with that impact driver. That means you can tear through these automobiles or ovens or whatever you may be breaking down. You'll be able to tear through those bad boys a lot faster. Plus, you throw in some perks. You throw in some modifications. Whew, it's not even close night and day. And we're going to demonstrate that here in just a little bit. In fact... We're going to demonstrate that right now. It is time to go out into the field and see these bad boys in action. We are gonna use them to wrench down some cars. So let's head outside, let's find ourselves some cars, and let's get to it. Let me show you what I have worked out here, ladies and gentlemen. 
we have ourselves three cars and we have ourselves three boxes. We have the wrench, we have the ratchet, and we have the impact driver. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use each one of these tools to scrap down a car. Then we're gonna put the contents that we get from the that car into the box. And we're gonna reload some more cars and do it again after we have all the perks and all of that fun stuff. So we're also going to see how many turns it takes to actually completely wrench down the car, just so you can see the difference in speed between the three tools. So let's start off with the wrench with no perks, no buffs, no modifications, nothing like that. Okay, so that took 16 actions in order to wrench it all the way down. Now let's go ahead and drop off the stuff that we got from that one. All right, so not a bad haul. We got a, we got some pretty good stuff. Now we are going to move on to the ratchet. Let's see how many times, how many actions it takes to wrench this car down with the ratchet. All right, so that took 13. 13 actions in order to get the car all the way broken down. Well, let's put the stuff back in here. And now we move on to the impact driver. Let's see how many cranks it takes to crap down this car with this bad boy. All right, that was 11, a grand total of 11 in order to get it down with the impact driver. Throw all of this stuff back. Now you will see that the, the hull is about the same. I mean, there's a little bit of, of difference like some of them we got engines, some of them we didn't. So it's not gonna change the amount that you get. However, it will increase the speed at which you can break down and get the same resources. So as you see, the, the haul that you get, the items you get are about the same. There is a little bit of difference. You're really worried, focusing on the speed. So let me go ahead and get some more cars in here. We're gonna modify our wrench, our ratchet and our impact driver we're going to get the perks that we need and we are going to go to town and see how much faster we can do this uh, with these tools once we are at the peak of their usefulness okay so we have salvage operations maxed out to level five i did go ahead and get my uh sexy rex all the way up to level four we have the modifications every single one of these has the exact same modification so our impact driver now has a block damage of 110. So again, we are gonna start with the wrench and we are going to wrench down this bad boy and see how long it takes us to wrench down this car. All right, that took eight. Eight actions with the wrench in order to get that car down. Now let's take a look at the resources that we have gathered. For the most part, we'd have gathered a whole bunch more resources. The only things we didn't get more of are iron, leather, uh, cloth, but the main ones like the electrical parts, before we only got one, now we have five. Before for mechanical parts, we had six, now we have 10. For springs, we had two, now we have six. For uh, pipes, we got almost double the pipes. We got double the oil. So. Not all of the resources have been increased, but that's just the first test. A lot of them have, so it's it's much it's very useful to get that salvage operations up. Not only because it will cut down the the time that it takes to wrench down items, you do get more resources once you go higher into salvage operations. Next up, it is the ratchet time. Let's see how many times it, how many actions it takes to wrench down this car with the ratchet. Wow, six, that's all it took. It took six, that is insane. And once again, we did get a whole bunch more resources, bunch more pipes, more leather, more springs, more mechanical parts. We got a bunch more polymer, we got oil, electric parts, an engine and a lead car battery out of this, uh, this time. So a lot more resources as well as doing it a heck of a lot faster. 
Now it is time to try it with the impact driver. Let's go ahead and see exactly how many actions it takes to break down this car with this bad boy. Five. <laughs> wow. Five is all that it took. That is insane. Now it does appear that the resource drop that we got on that last car was not as impressive. I don't know if maybe they're, uh, they're still balancing out the uh, resources for the impact driver since it is so brand new, but I would have expected us to get a little bit more. It looks like the only thing we got more of here is, uh, is springs. Everything else was almost the exact same, except we got a headlight instead of a car, instead of a, an engine. So I think the impact driver, it's still that salvage operations may not be um, working 100% for the impact driver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down another car. We're going to wrench it down and we're going to use the impact driver to break it down and we're going to compare. So this was no perks, no, no buffs, no modifications. This was fully perked, fully buffed, fully modded, and they are almost identical. So I'm going to try that. We're going to run this one more time just to see if uh, maybe this, this last one was a fluke or if salvage operations is not currently working for the impact driver. All right, so we've got another car spawned in here and let's break this down and see what resources we get. And there was our third run. So yeah, it looks like that the salvage operations, the boost that you get does not really work with the impact driver. Uh, it does seem to, to work with the ratchet and the wrench because I did notice quite a bump in the amount of resources with, with both of those items. But it does not appear to be working with the impact driver. So that's a bummer. In my opinion, after taking a look at these three weapons, the impact driver, it takes five zaps in order to break down a car from the top level down to nothing. The ratchet takes six. So if I had my choice between the ratchet and the impact driver fully modded with the perks all the way up, right now until they fix that bug with salvage operations, the ratchet's the way to go. Yes, it will take an extra action. However, you're getting a whole bunch more resources using the ratchet right now than you are the impact driver. So keep that in mind. I will release an update once they have fixed that, just so you know that the impact driver is uh, now good to go and you can use it. Because uh, even saving yourself that one hit, the more time saved, the better. Gathering as many resources as you can in the fastest amount of time, that's the way you want to go about it. So once they have fixed that, because I'm sure it's, it's it has to be a bug. It has to be something that they just have not implemented yet because Alpha 19 is still experimental. Once they, once they improve that and get that fixed, I will release an update video showing you guys that it is fixed and good to go. But for now, I would recommend the ratchet over the impact driver just because it's, it's not you get much more bang for your buck that way. You get a lot more resources out from the ratchet than you do from the impact driver uh, so far that I can tell. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is all things tools. We went over the perks, the attributes, the modifications, crafting these brand new tools, and exactly what they look like in action. My personal opinion is they are a great addition to Seven Days to Die. In previous alphas, the only thing you had at your disposal to break things down was the wrench. So it's really cool to see that the devs have finally added in a tier two and a tier three tool for breaking down items and, and gathering resources. Let me know down below what you guys think about these new tools. Was there something that you wanted me to test that I missed? Let me know that down below as well. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. If you found this video helpful and or enjoyable, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.